thing? <laughs> no, you better with the secret but let's pause. Yeah, we're all we're going to be sitting at the same time. We can go to the be up on the So, hi again, everyone. Uh, I hope the uh, lunch was good. Uh, yes. It was good for me, anyways. I hope we've had, we've had a good coffee. So, <laughs> you are well awake. I'm trying to do my best to make vision interesting. So, uh, anyways, uh, we will start with the next session uh, about power effects generation, <coughs> right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, power effects code generation. So, um, so yeah, let's begin with uh, thanking the sponsors. One point we can't say enough. Uh, it's super hard to organize any of these events. We need all the support we can, and these companies here put the money uh, to make this possible. Without it, it would have been very expensive for all of us. Uh, we, we, we are allowed to come here, have uh, great sessions and lunch for free just because of them. So a big thanks uh, one more time. Um, so let me, let me introduce myself uh, for, for those of you who don't know me already. So uh, my name is uh, Christian Fernandez, uh, Chris, uh, my friends from Chris, right? Uh, I've been, I, I, I came all the way from, from Spain from Tarragona. Tarragona is a city south to Barcelona. Uh, very beautiful if you want to visit. So I've been in software development for longer than I care to admit. I've uh, been doing a uh, power platform uh, since it was called something like uh, CRM4. So many, many years ago in a, long, in, in a galaxy far, far away. Um, so I am a coder. I I I, I, uh, I enjoy coding. That's that's probably the, the part of uh, IT that I enjoy the most. Uh, and then I, I I received this MVP recognition not that long ago. So I'm 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 happy to to be part of this community and uh, and to share with you guys. So you have the QR code there. Uh, feel free to reach me out to contact on LinkedIn or whatever uh, social media you prefer. Uh, to for any questions about this session or anything else, uh, so I'm more than happy to to contact you all guys. So, without any further ado, let's begin, right? So, rule number one of presentations: get to know your audience, right? So that's what I'm planning to do now. So I'm going to talk about power F, power effects code generation. So I need to know a little bit about your experience in general. Um, can you raise your hands? How many of you know what is power effects? Awesome, fantastic. So, uh, raise your, your hands the ones of you who do Canvas app development. Awesome. And the ones who do Canvas app development every day, including weekends? <laughs> awesome. All right, so. Uh, basically, you probably hear in, in, in social media, or whatever, right? Uh, that the, the Canvas app designer, right, uh, has a new feature now, and, and this new feature is something that allows us to view the code of what we are building, right? And this code is is, is uh, a YAML code that we can we can essentially that is defining all the elements that we are adding to to different screens in our Canvas app uh, designer. So in a Canvas app, you have different screens. Inside the screens, you can have the controls. And all of those, those elements, and, and in addition to the controls, you have the formulas as well. And all of those elements uh, are kind of encoded or are, are stored internally in this code, in this code called YAML. Right? And the good news is now uh, Microsoft and the editor is allowing us to view that code and not only that, we can copy that code, and not only that, we can take code from somewhere else and paste it into our apps. And what that code is gonna immediately take the shape of other controls or other elements in the screens that we can, uh, and formulas that we can immediately, immediately use, right? So uh, I think that's, that's a, a very, very, very cool feature. We'll, we'll see why, right? Uh, we were saying as well that all of this thing is encoded in YAML, right? So 
Raise your hand who knows what YAML is. Awesome. So a lot of people know what YAML is. I don't know what YAML is very well, but I can tell you a few characteristics of YAML, right? So YAML is a code that you can see there on the screen that is structured in the first place. So it's text, right? And it has this indentation. So you see kind of a hierarchy of things that are going on on the screen. And what we can see in here, actually, I can't see it very well. Could be about them. So what we can see on the screen is that that code over there is saying title container. So it's some element, and underneath they have controls and they have properties and it has children, and it's hierarchical, right? So that's one characteristic. The other thing is that it, it is human readable, so I can understand more or less what's going on there. I see the properties of my controls. I see the type they are. So. Two, two things that, 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 are, that kind of are very important because we can understand what's going on in that code. Not the Peter, Luis. Um, so it's, it's hierarchical as well, and uh, that, that means that I can, I can indicate here in this code that one element is made up, is, it has multiple components. Uh, you have the, the link there to the yaml.org uh, site where you can find more information about it. But it's essentially that. But, and this is what Microsoft is, or, or the Canvas app uh, designer is using to encode all of those set of controls that I have in my screen. Um, so, continuing with this line, why is this feature so cool? Uh, it's mainly because it enables that copying and pasting thing, right, which is you know, everybody, all developers love copying and pasting. So now we can copy and paste from, from more sources and more places. I can, I can copy it and share it with someone, someone else more easy. So I may have a, a screen somewhere with a set of controls. I can copy that code, paste it on Teams, and share it with someone else who can, uh, can, can again do the opposite kind of operation, take, take all of that uh, code, and it included on their application, which is which is uh, handy, right? Yeah, at least it's easy, right? Maybe it's not the best way to to, to the development, but it's easy. Right? Uh, probably uh, the, the 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 other most interesting feature of this is that I can I can take that code and uh, I can paste it in a, an external tool, like uh, we, we can see there. There, for example, Visual Studio Code. That's just a fancy editor. Uh, but I can use it there to do other stuff, like for example, search and replace, understand, copy and paste with a more sophisticated, uh, sophisticated way, uh, manipulate the properties, right? I can maybe create my own tools that can read that code that is not super complicated and make operations on it, right? And then the last here on the line is like to use code generators, and this is an idea that is spreading a little bit about the, the internet now, so can we do something, can we build tools, right, that generate this uh, YAML code for us? So more or less, that's, that's what the session is about, so let's see some demos, okay? Yeah, the moves. Is a quote like this. So I have my Canvas app editor. Um, my assistant is gone. <laughs> Can you come help here, Betty? Thank you. So, uh, so we have the, the Canvas uh, app editor here. It's an empty screen. So see the slides, right? You can see the slides. All right, what, what happened there? This is what's been make my share. I know that. But... Can you see it now? Yeah. Awesome. So if I go over here, well, this one screen, are we good? <laughs> so it's kind of complicated. So I have my empty screen here, and I can start, you know, um, as usual, coming and, and adding any, any controls to my designer. I have the properties on the right hand side here. I can have even my formulas, whatever I need, right? And what this feature is about is that now I can go to a screen, for example, and click on the three dots and I'll use this option called uh, view code. 
and here is what, what he's presenting me, showing me all the code that I, can, I cannot modify yet. Microsoft said that this feature will come eventually. I will be able to modify the code here, right, directly, but we cannot do that for now. But I can take it and copy it and, and, and do something with it. I can just uh, I actually have a button here for, to copy the code and take it somewhere else. And I can see all the properties and all, right? And this same feature, it works uh, in many places. Like I can, I can go at a control level, for example, go to the three dots again, and in the copy option, I have two copy options now. I have the normal copy and the copy code. And if I take the copy code, I can take it to another tool like the almighty note, notepad and paste it in here and modify anything with it and say this is not going to be 244 uh, pixels in, in, in or the position is not going to be 245 anymore, it's going to be 0 and 0, right? And if I take this code back, I can do control C to copy it back. <coughs> go to the editor and paste it somewhere else and say three dots and paste as code, right? And then I will say hello on it every time. So the properties are going, are going to be, that, that particular property gets changed, but the idea is that I can go, take the code, modify it somewhere else, and go and paste it back, okay? That's in summary the feature, right? So uh, let's see what we can do with it. So I can change it from here, I think. So, I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's the feature we were talking about. How can we use this to generate code, right? And then we have this other idea of code generators. So, anyone knows what a code generator is? Raise your hand if there was no who knows what a code generator is. Fantastic. So, the idea of a code generator is basically let's use any tools, let's create a tool that can generate code for us. Awesome. But this. This, this is one sheet I'm going to replace. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically people usually come with the best solutions to problems, right? I'm not calling you lazy, by the way. <laughs> No, it's too worried. No, they're not weaker. Never mind, I will use this. Uh -huh. let, let's keep the flow going. Oh, wait. Okay, so uh, code generator. Right? So a code generator is a tool that we develop uh, using whatever means we want, whatever platform, whatever uh, language we want to create a program that generates codes for, for us, right? If you think about, about it, Copilot is a code generator, right? So you type in there, I want a fancy uh, HTML uh, app or page that does this or does that, right? So that's Copilot is a, or, or ChatGPT is a code generator. Uh, the problem is that Copilot and, uh, well, not a problem, not exactly like a problem, but uh, one, one characteristic of Copilot is that it's not always deterministic. It's a fancy word. Who knows what deterministic means? So deterministic is basically, for any given input, I will get the same output, which means basically Copilot won't get me the same answer or the same code every single time. But depending on the scenario, I might want to get the same code every single time for whatever reason. Maybe I'm following Sanders and I want to make sure all of the code is always the same. Uh, never mind. The other reason why, why we want to use code generators uh, instead of Copilot by the way, I'm not saying anything wrong against Copilot. I'm an NDP, I can only speak good things about uh, Copilot. Uh, so, uh, the, other, the other nice thing is about, about Generator is that allows me to basically automate the generation of repetitive code, right? So, if I have a huge uh, screen with multiple fields on it and, and it's, a, it's very long, right? Even though with Canvas app, uh, Canvas app makes it so easier with the designer as well, it makes it so easy for us to go and, and add controls and organize them in a nice way. It's take, it still takes a lot of time to, to create a decent form in any, any canvas, right? So imagine I can do, create something like a code generator to generate the code for all my forms automatically. That would be a huge time saving, right? Uh, 
And because it is a, a, a time saver, it will uh, speed up my development as well. So, uh, and, uh, and if I write that code or I generate that code in a way that I know is proven, it's gonna be less prone to errors or books. So all, all good things about code generators, right? Uh, seems like, a, like the silver bullet, it's not. It's just another tool that we can have in our, uh, under our belts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's more or less the idea. So yeah, this, this, this concept of a code generator is a tool that we create to generate more code. Right. Uh, what if we can use Power Apps or Canvas Apps more specifically to generate more code? That's, that's the idea and that, that is kind of uh, moving around the, the, the internet and the social media. So uh, uh, Matt, again, Matt Viney, I think is uh, the, one of the first that who came, came up with this. Um, so, and it, it's exciting as well. Like we can use all of this to create code generators and, and reuse it in, in our Canvas app. Let's see how, right? Let's write the first or first code generator using Canvas apps. You told that. Accenture. Okay. So, in order to, met, I, I, I am, uh, what we are seeing here on the screen is, uh, is, is, is the Canvas app designer, I will create a new empty screen, right? And I will add an, an element here. Let's, let's say I want to generate the code, right? We, we are talking here a lot about power effects and, uh, and YAML and all of that, but a code generator is not necessarily something that generates code for, for Canvas app or for, for power effects, right? It's, it can be anything. So what, what if I want to generate HTML code? How would I do it with a with, with canvas? Okay, let's let's you, let, let's include copilot in this demo just for the sake of it. Okay, so I will ask copilot here to generate HTML code for me, and it's going to be a very simple HTML code. It's going to be a code with two labels. Actually, I have my prompt somewhere over here at the door of the code slide. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, hey, copilot, please uh, generate HTML code for me that contains two labels, one saying, hello, Chris, and another line saying, your favorite color is green. This is like the hello world of HTML, right? So it's generating this, this code in here. So what I want to do now is to make this bigger, because I can't see it. Uh, I'll copy this code. So what I want to do is to create a Canvas app that generates this code for me every single time, but it replaces some parts of it using, using inputs and, and variables. Right? So I will go back to my, my, my empty screen, and what I will do is to insert a label over here, All right, epic. I'll make this label a little bit bigger, and I'll paste that HTML code that I, that compiler just generated for me. Uh, sorry, that's not a one. And go back to compiler and copy. You see how we love doing copying and pasting all the time? Where is the quotes over here? No, that copy button doesn't work. So let me go back over here. Okay, now if I cut. Yeah. I'll just copy this. Right click copy. And go over here. And paste in here. Right. And what I will see here is such, uh, first of all, it doesn't work, right? It's breaking. Uh, so. There are some, some things that are not directly compatible with, uh, with, with uh, the PowerFX uh, syntax in here, so I need to do some manipulation of this code. So what I will do then is to go and say add uh, this uh, dollar symbol, and I will replace every single double quote, right, to double double quotes. So I'm gonna double that. So I'll do this, select, and then do control F, uh, and replace it now here. 
Where is double flops? Here, with this, and that should work. Yeah, except for this one and this one. The first and the last. Okay. So I have my code in here, right? Uh, and now I want I want to th those two kind of parameters that I included here. What's your name? My, my uh, sorry, hello, Chris, and uh, your favorite color is green. So I want to make that variable. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Next slide. And uh, I will include here a couple of uh, text boxes, text inputs. Right. The first one is gonna be called name. Let's rename this to LBL name. Right, and I want to include maybe a drop down here, maybe a control. And I will say here a DRP headquarters. Right, I'm going to make this three values like this. Oops, red. in and wood, right? All right. Okay, so yeah, I made my two, two values in here, my text input, this is the name. Uh, I will give this a value, I will give the play button somewhere, where is it? Yeah, I will preview here, I put my name on this. Oops. Uh, I like call it Chris, right? And my favorite color is red. So all I need to do now is in this label, right, go and, and replace those values with the values that I have in my form. And all I need to do is to use this feature called string interpolation, which basically basically is indicated here by this dollar symbol. Uh, string interpolation is just another, another fancy name there to say replace the values here with uh, DRP, or sorry, this is LDL name, it should have been TXT name, actually, uh, dot text. And here, my favorite color is, I can do the same thing again one more time. Looks really hard to program looking at somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> so it's gonna be DRP colors, double challenge here, so <laughs> colors that selected text dot uh, value, that's the one. And I copy the same thing and put it in here over again in the quarter, right? Okay, so now I kind of have my first code generator here using Canvas, a very simple version of it, right? So what I have here is uh, two input value, input controls. I have the code that I have generated. And now I can maybe add a, 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 a button here to copy and paste this code and maybe to make it even better, I can add a preview. So all, all I, I'm gonna do here is to go and search for HTML, uh, like that. Uh, but this time, instead of, uh, I'm gonna put it somewhere here, to the right, to have a preview. But this time, instead of showing the HTML code, I will do, uh, uh, this is the code, right? LBL code, and I will do, where is my HTML done here? So LBL code, like this, dot text, all right, and that should give me a preview of the code that I just generated there. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, so three elements here. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of set, settling uh, the elements that, that my code generator, generator in PowerFX will look like, or in Canvas. So I have my input controls, the code that I want to generate with the placeholders in it, using this string interpolation thing, and I have a preview, okay? So what, what can I do with this? Right, this seems useless, but if you start thinking about that, you can, you can actually use it in many, many, many places. So, so let me go to my slides for two seconds and I'll be back to the demo mode, right? Uh, so what I have here and what I, what, I, what I want to present to you here is three examples on things that we can do with this tool, right? Three simple examples, but the idea is that, or the, the, the only goal here is that it kind of sparks your imagination and it lets you think or come up with more and more sophisticated solutions, right? 
Uh, demo number one is going to be a BPF generator, right? And it, it uses the same same uh, same concept that we just seen. Three elements: input one is a code that I'm generator generating, and a preview to, in this case, generate a BPF generator. Okay. So I'll go to my demo. I don't think I need to type anymore. Hopefully not. Um, so I'll go to my demo again. Hopefully you can see this. And I have this, okay, so I'm going to click uh, the play button. And what I'm seeing here, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, going the other way. Yeah, let's zoom in. Yeah. What? It's fine, you can. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll explain what we are seeing on the screen, right? Uh, so we see on the left hand side, a little bit of uh, input controls. On the right, right hand side, we have the, the code. We will see exactly what that code is doing. And in the top, we have a preview. And down below here, I have a reset button. So I'm going to click on this because this basically does uh, pre-setting up stuff, right? Uh, so that, that's, you're probably familiar with that bar. Have you ever seen that blue bar break? You're seeing on the top. That's the business process flow bar that comes for free uh, in model driven apps. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to build one of those in Canvas apps because you need to literally go element by element and put it in there, make sure it's all responsive, everything fits in the, set, in the right place, doing that thing of the loop dots with black, white, that kind of changes when you click on RAM. This, all of this, this is a nightmare to do, to build from scratch, right? What if I can, can have a generator? that does all of this for me, and that also makes this, this configurable, right? So I can see here down below uh, the list of stages, I can remove one. I still have my preview there working, so I can add a new stage. And so identify, and then we can do manage, and I can add a new stage, and I can do complete. There it is. And as you can see, every time I'm doing that, the preview on the top, by the way, I can change this as well. We can just keep them under me. Okay. So every time I make a change, the preview bar on the top it changes. That's my preview. On the right hand side, the code is there, it's changing as well. Right? And if I go to design mode one more time, I can go and check check out this formula. This is the exact same thing that we saw before. It's just a uh, the, 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 the YAML code that I took from a previous work, right? I added the placeholders to it, like this, the title and the subtitle. This is just the placeholders, the places in the formula where I want to replace it by the inputs that I already have in my form. And uh, at the end, this is just a string, right? And what I, what I added as well to make the, my life easier is to add, use, make, add a button uh, to make use of the copy function that adds all of this code directly to uh, my, my clipboard. So it kind of makes it even easier. So how does this work? How do I use it? First of all, I go and configure, make all the changes I want in here. Uh, maybe I want to remove something like this and say hours. Doesn't matter. And then when I'm ready, I preview it, make sure it works. It works, yeah, it works. So I can just go and copy. And then I can go to another empty uh, canvas app, not a new screen over here, blank screen, right? And make use of this new feature, which is right click, paste, and paste as code. And if everything goes well, it takes a little bit of time, but I can hit the play button here. Uh, I can click on the reset that loads everything. And uh, I see my, 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 my partner, my business for the slow bar. So zero effort. The effort goes into creating the first version of this, but then you can create your own generator, generator using the tools that you already know, using PowerFX, which is a language you already know, to replicate this effort and to use it in more places. Make any piece of code that you may have can be converted into something that you can go and configure it easily, right? And then create a generator for it. Uh, and copy and paste it in your, your projects. That's where you become more productive, right? That's the whole, the whole point of this. Okay, so that's example number one. 
you replicate this effort and to use it in more places. Make any piece of code that you may have can be converted into something that you can go and configure it easily, right? And then create a generator for it uh, and copy and paste it in your, your projects. That's when you become more productive, right? That's the whole, the whole point of this. Okay, so that's example number one. Any questions? Am I going too far, too slow, too boring? All right. So example number one, one out of three done. Example number two, uh, what if we can do the same thing but for forms? I mean, I'm, I'm raising the level a little, a little bit, right? So BPF generator, maybe, maybe that doesn't, I don't use it uh, a lot. But forms, I mean, if you work with data, I spend a lot of time doing forms, right? What if I can create a tool that does the forms for me? And all I need to do is tell me the type, um, maybe the label for it, a couple of uh, the data type and the labels, a couple of parameters, and then you know, click on a button, copy and paste. What if I can do, I can build something like that? Well, I built it, right? So uh, if I go to my examples again, by the way, that, 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 that is what uh, model driven apps does for us for free, right? But we don't have that in, in Canvas app. We're trying to, try to close the gap there between the Canvas app world and the model driven apps world. So uh, anyways, uh, let me go back here to the list of screens, go to form generator this time, and I'll make this bigger. <coughs> I really want to zoom in this a little bit so you can see it better. It looks great here, by the way. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I can, uh, I have here the same, same concepts again, except for the preview part, but the same concept here. On the left hand side, I have a set of input controls. On the right hand side, I see something that resembles that looks like a YAML code that is being generated and all I can do is to start uh, adding input values uh, for, for my, 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 my form, right? So I have here two, two fields, the first one is field name, the se second is the field type and I have a drop down here with all the values so I can start saying, okay, I'm going to create a contact form so first field is going to be name and the type is going to be uh, text and I can do, it's going to be mandatory, and it's going to add the button. So immediately, my code on the right hand side changes, and I have a hierarchy of containers and everything that I need to create a form that is according to whatever, uh, whatever design principles they have in there, so I can, I can just reuse it. Uh, so I can I keep adding uh, stuff in here, so it's going to be the email, maybe email and then field type, do I have email? If not, I don't have, I just make it text. Uh, I'm gonna ask about, or I'm gonna show the age, for example, and it's gonna be number, keep adding. I have other stuff here like um, maybe the rating, yeah. So experience, uh, value, experience, right? And keep adding. So. Same, same, same idea. So I have my head generator on the left hand side. Uh, on the middle, on the right hand side, I have my my code. Uh, this code is slightly more complex. I mean, this can be can get really complex, right? But uh, this is one of those things that you only do once, and then you reuse it all the time. Uh, so this time, this code over here, as you will see, is doing. Where is it? Can't find it now. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to show you something, but I couldn't find it. Um, ne never mind. Uh, so, the, the 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 main thing here is uh, I have my my four pump configured. How do I use? It, right. I can go and click on the copy button. As simple as that. Go to my canvas app again. Maybe just remove that or create a new, a new empty screen. And then use the feature that we already know, which is paste as code. And hopefully that works. All right. 
So I have it there. It took me seconds to do this, right? You have to put the work beforehand, but it will give you, give, me, give, you, give you that. So imagine how the impact of this, for example, for, uh, you know, the, the look, look oh, sorry, was the, your standards, right? We were, we were talking before about how to make look, how, how to make our apps look good, and how to make sure they are, they are useful, and then uh, uh, they are according to accessibility standards as well, and they, the, um, you know, Sarah was telling us how to do all of that in, in modern driven, uh, modern driven apps, yeah? But imagine we have the same guidelines as well in Canvas apps, right? So, sometimes meeting all of those um, without doing it on purpose, like in, in the sense of it takes a lot of work, right? But what if we, we have all of that, those guidelines condensed in, in a piece of code that we can reuse like this and make sure that all of the all of the fields that we, we use on the, on our forms kind of follow follow the same principles. How easy it is to, to reuse this across across our developments and in our organization, right? So that's that's example number two, two there gone. Uh, let me go back to the slides and we want to demo number three uh, again raising the label the 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 level a little bit more, and now we are going to talk about design systems, right? And I hate this, and I love it for the same reason, that I, I'm not a, a, a designer, uh, right? and it, it, it's, it's hard to me to create apps and screens that look good from a designer point of view, because I don't know how to do it, and I love the idea that there are tools out there, like the uh, you know, design systems that uh, some people out there are working on. So, again, I'm, I'm putting here uh, Matthew Devine. Yeah, he actually, let, let me go to, to the, the article there. I, I have the link there, I can share it with you later if you, don't, if you want it. But uh, basically, Matthew wrote this article in 2022, right? And this is all about how can we create a design system for all Canvas apps in a way that I can make all of the characteristics like colors, uh, sizes, fonts, and all of that configurable in a central place. This was all before, um, before we had the themes functionality in Canvas apps, which we already have, right? But they are somehow limited, right? What uh, Matthew is uh, explaining here is slightly more powerful, and it's, it's an idea that is, I think it is uh, uh, widely adopted as well. So it's a very interesting article if you can read it. But um, but the point, the point, the main points here is that uh, he's explaining how we can we can make use of a, a variable where we configure all of the aspects like. Again, colors, uh, different type of colors, the primary, the accents, and neutral, neutral colors. Uh, how we can use external tools as well to create good combination of colors, which is not always easy, especially if you're a developer. We lack that capability completely. Um, so, so, and and we end up having a variable in in, in our formulas that contains all of those parameters, like. What colors do I want to use in my app? What are the ads in the quarter? What are the neutral colors? And so on. And then same for fonts as well. Uh, creating fonts is kind of, uh, or selecting the right fonts is complicated. And it's even more complicated if you have multiple controls in your app to go to each one of them and assigning the same, exact same font every time. So there's consistency across the entire app. So. Again, we, we managed to, to get through that by, by creating an object where I store the, the, the different fonts that I, I'm, I'm going to use, the size as well, same, same sort, right? same thing comes. Um, and then Matthew got, but mentions here other, other examples, other attempts to, to create this design system. There are other, other people who were doing all of this. Uh, icons is another problem as well, because you know, you know yourself, uh, we have to embed the icons directly in our, in our app, and so making all of that configurable is kind of complicated. Um, uh, and the other part of this, if to, to, to even add more to all of this, is that 
every time we add a new control to, to our Canvas app, we need to configure a lot of properties so that control inherits all of those colors and fonts and sizes that we wanted to, to inherit, right? And that's all cumbersome, it takes a lot of work. And, and this article was written in 2022 when we didn't have this functionality of copying and pasting uh, YAML. So, how can we mix this article with this new function? And uh, so, I will show you in a second until we here. So we can put all of this knowledge about this design system in something called uh, the theme build. I call it the theme builder, but it's, you can call it whatever you want, right? And it's essentially exactly what is described in the article, right? Just put it in, in all of that knowledge inside, inside, inside an app. So here, what I have is uh, basically, hopefully you can see, I have four, four tabs at the top that uh, will allow me to configure multiple aspects of the UI, the, 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 the design that I'm, I want to configure. Uh, starting from the colors, for example. Uh, I have my primary colors at the top, the accent colors. I even have links here to the main article and put up to these tools that I mentioned in there. So say, for example, I click on this one, I will take you to this colors.co uh, page that I can accept all the cookies. Uh, but this page is essentially something to generate a uh, color palettes, right? So if you don't know how to mix colors, this is your place to go. So uh, I can go and copy nice combination of colors. I'm copying that one. I can go to my designer there and I can say, okay, my primary one color is going to be this one. And I paste the blue there. I think that works. Yeah, it changes. Uh, I can go again to the page and say the other color is to have this one. Go to my designer and paste it in here. Really bad combination for this one, but you get the idea, right? You can use external tools there to get uh, your right combination of colors. Copy all of the color codes and add them in here, right? And then uh, this code generator, as you can see here on the right hand side, right panel, we have a code tab, right? And this code that we see on the right hand side is immediately inheriting all of that, those configurations, those inputs that we added in there. So primary colors, all of that, but it doesn't stop in there. So I can do fonts, for example, and I can go and configure the fonts and say, okay, now I'm not gonna use a, a Arial, I'm gonna use avant-garde and change this other secondary for the body. I can tweak the sizes as well to using using uh, those sliders and all of that, and, and 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 the code that we see on the right hand side is is changing according, right? I can do the same with icons. So I don't have any icons. I have a reset button here that populates a few icons, but I want I can go and change it myself. So I can add maybe icon number one, two, three, four, five. Let me see icon six. Very original name, right? And then it's asking me for the SVG, right? So uh, what's the SVG thing? I don't know what that's, that is. But I have here a few, a few links, the same way I had it with the colors to help me get the, the, the color codes. I have something for icons, which is four different places where I can uh, uh, get icons from. So for example, uh, the first one, font also. If they click in there, it takes me to this font also page. I have likes. And here I have a huge, nervous uh, database full of icons that I can use in my, my app. So I can pick any, the hard one, for example. And, uh, and so does it work? There you go. And I have a button somewhere here to copy the SVG. So I have a SVG and SVG tab on the right hand side. I can go and copy, select. How do I copy this? Did I go off it? No. Where is the copy button? I can't see it. Just we can. Okay, copy. Awesome. What awesome, right? <laughs> so I, I can go now over here to my app again, and where it says SVG, I can come, right click and paste this, and then click on add, and hopefully it probably works well, and I have my icon there. And I can repeat the process 
for as many times as they want, knowing that at the end, all of that code will be added here in my code, right? So how, how do I use all this? Again, same, same, same uh, mechanics, right? I can use the copy button. I can go to an end, well, not an empty app uh, anymore, right? Uh, I can go now, this is, this is code for style. It's kind of like a variable that I store somewhere. And, and that somewhere can be the formula section. Anyone is familiar with this formula thing? Anyone used it? Fantastic. So this formula thing, ah, it's not working. This formula thing uh, is a place where I can, I can create functions and values that are not going to change very often in my app, and I can reference later. It's like a variable, if you want. Right? It's, it's more than a variable, but it's a place where I can, I can uh, add those, uh, those values that won't, won't change. Right? And it's the perfect place where I can put place a configuration for my themes, all, all the, the styles. And if you scroll down here, it was showing an error. I don't know what was that. Yeah, the name of the icon, the adult space, that's yeah. So maybe it doesn't work. I want an git grammar to even try to fix it. No. I'll just remove it for now, right? For the dead. OK. That seems to be working. Um, and long story short, I have the place where, where I, I, am, I, I am including uh, all of those parameters for my themes, and then I can just use them. I can include, for example, something very visual like an icon. Uh, I will add this icon control. I know how the moderns control one here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, when I go to the icon image, I can, do, I can reference this from the formula, my theme, now, programming with that hand is kind of really challenging, I have to say. Anyways, my thing dot icons, they have all the objects that I define visually in my generator, and I can say icons, and I can say dot, and this is going to be my checklist, for example. And the fair could go well, but I should load, and it's not working. Let me pick another one. Any idea why it's not working? Yeah, maybe I need to use an image, so down, right? Okay, so let me use an image here. Where is that? And that's ready to Anyway, repeat the process. My theme, we go dot uh, icons dot checklist, for example. Awesome, now it works. So, same way I did this with this icon, right? I can do the same with all the properties. So I don't have to, to go and define them every single time. I just configure them. I use them in the formula section and I reference them in the properties. <laughs> but that's not all, right? I can do even more stuff with this. Actually, this is, this is the, the, exact, the most powerful example that I have. What if I can copy the default, the default values for any controls that automatically inherit the properties and the values that I have, that I need. So I don't need to go and change manually all of those values. Those, those forms are just included and added there directly for me with the right uh, configuration that is taken directly from the theme object, right? I can add that, right? I have here a, a preview for only one, two, three, four controls, but I can add even more. I can keep growing this list. And as you can see here, next to every control, I already have uh, a copy button. And if I click on it, this button is copying the power effects, or sorry, the YAML code for that button that automatically inherits the properties of, uh, of my team. So if I go here now to my app, I can right click and paste as code that will add the button. And if I go and check the properties of this button, yeah, we, yeah, our inputs, and maybe check the color. Oh, sorry, it's a um, teal color, teal color, anyway. And this is a modern control, do not all of this. Yeah, here it is. So, you can see here the base palette control is automatically inheriting the values 
from my theme is taking the primary one control and I don't need to go and configure that every single time. What I'm trying to say here is that I can have a preview of all the, the base controls that I may have in my app and add a copy button next to, it, to them that copies the initial values for those controls that are automatically reading my theme, my, my theme values. Uh, so I don't have to do that manually every single time. So for a design system like this, uh, I think it has a lot, a lot of powerful, and it's really powerful, like in the sense that it can really save a lot of time with uh, uh, having that design, design configuration in mind, right? Uh, and again, all the credits here goes to, to Matt uh, for, for this article that I took from, from, from his log. Uh, it's really worth reading. So it explains the, the mechanics, the logic, the problems that he's trying to solve and a combination. Uh, so what I did is just to put all of that into, into one of those generators, right? So that's demo number three, right? But we are not, yeah, not, not finishing yet. So I have a kind of like a small surprise, right? I want to, to finish with uh, in the last five minutes that I have left. So uh, inspired by Guido here, Right, I and actually let me go over to the PCF gallery. Raise your hand who knows what this page is about. Awesome, everybody knows what this page is about, right? So, this is a place where, uh, and, and Sarah and the others were, were mentioning as well, where, where we can take our uh, PCF controls from, right? So, with this idea of sharing the PCF controls, right? What, what if you can do something similar as well with, uh, with the PowerFX code and that gamma, right? So I created this site, uh, it's called pfx.cutlery, inspired and actually more than inspired by, by, by Guido, with all the help of, uh, help of Guido. And this is a place where basically I would like to start uh, sharing uh, uh, all of the PFX or PowerFX code that we that you guys can, can come up with, right? Uh, and the idea is very simple, right? Let's use this new feature. Let's have a repository where anyone can submit their own YAML code and make it available. Uh, and that code can be a static code, right? So something that anyone can take and uh, use uh, straight away in their uh, in their applications, or it can be generators like the ones that I showed you before. Those are the only four contributions that I have uh, for now because it's brand new since I finished uh, the site uh, last night. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, 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 that's the idea, right? Uh, you will be able to come here, open any of, the, of the, the, the code snippets that you will find, use the copy code button, and then take it to your own app over here read a new screen, blank, and then paste here, the yellow, and that will do all of that for you, right? If this works, which doesn't seem to be working out. Did that do anything? It didn't copy, right? So if I go here, one more time, try that, copy code. Frozen. Okay, so copy. If I go back here to the app, one more time, and paste code. Okay, seems to be doing something. Yeah, there you go. So you, you can you can copy and paste it and start using the the um, the theme uh, the, the yeah the theme builder or the theme generator in this case. So. PCF Gallery, that's the original one. PFS, PFX Gallery, it's even hard to pronounce. Uh, PFX Gallery uh, is uh, the, the new kid on the block, right? So where you can, you have, it's a place where you can go and, and, and take any, any of those awesome uh, pieces of code that you already have in there and share it with the community, right? Uh, feel free to, to submit your, your code and, and we will add them in here and hopefully that the site can, can grow. Uh, and that's, that's it pretty much, right? So let me go to the last one now. Questions and conclusion. So thank you for that. Um, I'm not, not going to repeat myself again, saying that I, I see this as something very powerful, right? Uh, I think it has many, many uses. This is only the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg. 
uh, I have many, many ideas. Like you can you can you can have generator for so many things, right? But uh, let's stop in there. So, any questions? Feel free to shout. With vast few for stars, but one mission and then. Thank you very much. Chris? Thank you, Chris. Uh, I was just curious to see what the add button is doing there. So it's like try to append some, something to the code or is it like... Yeah, when, when you copy, you mean when you copy and paste, right? No, when, uh, when you add, for example, um, an element to the code. Yeah. Right, so you're trying, you append something to the code or... Yeah, I can see it also when I go home. I'll definitely yeah. check it out. But I just want to just yeah. out of curiosity. When 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 you paste it in the, the Canva Designer, whatever you paste in the whatever YAML you append uh, is added to the code that you have in there, right? So that's why in my demos, I always started with an empty screen because if you have anything in there, say for example, you are copying a button and it's button one, right? Well, you are copying and pasting another YAML that is uh, as well another uh, button one. It will automatically be renamed to bottom one underscore one. I think it is because the one that you have uh, two bottom do the same. And it's gonna. This is smart enough to make some changes to the YAML code that you are pasting, so it doesn't break whatever you already have in there. Nice. Thank you for your support. Very interesting. Um, can, you, can you copy this uh, within another parent uh, control? I don't think so. I haven't tried. Uh, you mean, for example, like a gallery or something? Yeah, within a layout. I haven't tried I had to paste inside a gallery. You can definitely generate, and this is what I, I do a lot, or you can, we can generate the entire code, for, or sorry, copy the entire code for a gallery and the components inside the gallery, right? And when I find myself uh, doing a loss is to copy the gallery uh, YAML code, paste it in Visual Studio or some other text editor, making changes there my, myself, like, especially when it's uh, something complicated, right? It's easier for me to, because I prefer it that way, I'm not saying it's the way to go, right? Uh, it's easier to me to see the code and manipulate the code and then copy and paste some elements myself and then I go and delete the gallery and then add it again, right? That's what I do. I remove the whole thing and then paste the entire gallery. So, because if I just go and paste the same code again, it's going to be duplicated this time. Sarah. In the last one. Well, so, how would you compare this to, like, when would you use this instead of components? Uh, think about forms, for example. That's probably where I will use it the most. But you can make, like, components for, for those type of fields, or, like, combos, too, and then use them as components. Yeah, but you still need to go and add every single field of those, and especially if you're dealing with... Uh, a complex layout, right? What I do all the time, and I don't know why, is try to, or, or, or I end up replicating myself a modern driven app into a canvas app, right? It happens a lot to, in my projects anyway, right? Someone has a, a, a SharePoint uh, library and they want to make it look exactly as it was a modern driven app, for whatever reason, right? We hate it, but everybody loves it at the same time. But and, and doing that work of adding 27 different fields, right? In the containers, in the right way, so with the right properties, and they're all the same, all the time, right? You cannot create a component for a form with 27 fields, right? So if you don't want to use the forms component, which is not a lot of but in that scenario, I think it is perfect, right? Uh, think about uh, things like uh, layouts as well. Um, uh, maybe you want to have a, some, some level of accelerator for a layout designer where you can just input a few parameters of your layout, create a generator for it, and let it generate the code for you and paste it every single time. That's another scenario. 
Wait, not all the YAML that we copy and paste needs to be a generator, right? Uh, we can we can do we can use it only for a specific thing. The YAML copy and paste functionality is there for 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 other stuff as well. Generator is one one of the uses that that I I came across it for. Uh, for the Thank you. That's it. I know it's done, I think. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why the one? You have there the feedback survey, which is the open memory. Yes. yes. Man, yeah, and then the keyword is all there. If you would see, contact me for anything. Thank you. Job. Ian. Um, so, was Ian Monty during this whole thing? I'm saying, I'm about to change your name. Yeah. It's like, 